Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome once again to Walking Through the Word Ministry, brought to you by Old Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we're pastored by Thurman Cunningham Sr. And welcome once again, my name is Tyrone Cunningham, and we'll be delving again, once again, in the series of Divine Dispatch. Divine Dispatch. We'll be coming from Exodus chapters 2, verses 1 through 22. 25, excuse me. Verses 1 through 25, chapter 2 of Exodus. And in the last lesson, we had just walked over into Exodus. Chapter 1 uh, gave us a lot of different avenues to go down, but at the very beginning, God's, God's promise to Abraham, as he had promised him, that his seed would be as plenteous or as numerous as the seed, uh, stars in the sky or the sand to the sea, in the, in the sea, excuse me. And these things had started to come to pass. And it had angered the Egyptians, when, which was used to be or, or had once been home and a place of comfort had become a place of conflict and, and calamities. And the Pharaoh at that time had issued an edict to the midwives and told the midwives that there was a, a Hebrew boy, a Hebrew baby, that was a boy born to the Hebrews that you would kill him on the stool. The Hebrew uh, children had grown to such proportion, had grown to such large proportions that they had feared that they would turn against them if an enemy were to come, that they would side with the Hebrews. So the Pharaoh came up with a plan. He devised a plan. He said what he would do is he would kill off the seed giver. Mm -hmm. He would kill off the male uh, offspring. And the midwives, they disobeyed the order. And it had infuriated him. It had made him so mad that he had said, well, not just the midwives, but anyone who sees a Hebrew baby born, and if it was a male child, right. throw it in the river, drown, alive. Now, this place that they once felt comfortable in had become a little bit uh, filled with, as I said, Calamity. Right, yeah. right. And this is where our lesson is found. And this is where we pick up tonight. It says here in chapter 2, verse 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took and took to wife a daughter of Levi. 2. And the woman conceived and had and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Now you got to understand, to do this, she had to be working in faith. She had to be working uh, under God's ordinance, under God's command, because it would be surely detrimental to her mm -hmm. if the child was found. Yeah. Because now what she's doing is going in direct contradiction to what the Pharaoh had said. Yeah. She hid her baby child. Now, you got to remember, uh, you'll find out later on, but I'll, I'll give you some insight into it right now. Miriam and Aaron was already born. These were this child's older sister and brother. They were born before the Pharaoh had given this command. So they were already on the scene. They, had, they, had, they, 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 they didn't uh, witness this particular command being given. They had already been brought on the scene. So he had an older brother and an older sister, this child, who is yet to be named. It says here in three, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark, a bulrush, and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flag by the river's brink. Now, you got to understand that in the, in the rivers of Egypt, you had all types of animals. You had crocodiles. You had all different types of beasts that could bring harm unto the... So now she is working primarily under the faith that God would take care of her child. Right, right. She's, a, she's working in such a, in the capacity that she understands that regardless of what, my child in the house will die because they'll surely find him. After a while, the baby's crying. After a while, the baby is being, needing to be nursed and this baby will be found and they will surely kill my child. So the only, the only,
only solution that I have, the only answer to this particular uh, problem or this, this dilemma that I find myself in is to put him in the same device in which the Pharaoh had commanded them to do. Are you listening at the way it's going here? Uh, device of destruction has become a device of deliverance. It has changed. The water that was supposed to have killed her child, she has put in the water to save her child. Four, and the sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. This is Miriam. This is his older sister. This is who is watching. She can write safely, but the mother has trusted her child in the Lord's hand. All right, all right. Miriam is watching as this baby boy, this three-month-old child, yeah. is being put in a, an ark of sorts all right, all right, all right. and floating down the river. And now her, his sister is walking beside the river bank to see what will become of her baby brother. Mm. This is intensifying to me, whether it is to you. You got to understand. I'm reading this as though I've never seen this before, and I want you to go with me as though you haven't heard this story before yes. because it's more exciting and we can get more out of it yes. if we read it together and if this thing unfolds together. It says in 5, when the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. She has no idea what's in this particular device, this ark. She has no idea. She is the Pharaoh's daughter, the same one that issued this command to have all the Hebrew boys key. that were born unto the Hebrew women. The same Pharaoh, and this is his daughter, who's coming down to bathe. Can you see God's providence? Can you see God's sovereignty? Can you see God working in the midst of all of these situations that's going on? God is in the midst of every situation that you may find yourself in. We're going to bring all these things to pass. We're going to make sure that everything that I talk about is applicable to our life. Yeah. Yeah. Says here in 6, and when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Now, this is God working in a non-believer. Oh, you don't think that God can bless you through somebody who may not very well love the Lord like you say he does. Oh, we got to depend on one another. We got to be Christians tied together, and we only depend on each other. But God can use whomever he wants to use to bless you however he intends to, to bless you. Yeah. The narrative is set by God. The things that are going on, the way that the story is unfolding, the, the sovereignty and the providential care that God is providing for this young child is apparent at this point. All right. This daughter... Of the Pharaoh who remember these are idolatrous people. These people don't believe in the same God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But she still had compassion on this child. And the first thing she said, this is one of these Hebrew children. Instead of doing like her father instructed everybody to do. To drown. The baby cried. And God's mercy showed through a non-believer. Uh -huh. We got to stop wrapping ourselves around this church thing. Uh -huh. We got to stop wrapping ourselves around just the people in the church because you don't ever know where your blessing may come from. Yeah. You don't know who may bless you just because he's an atheist. Just because he doesn't believe the same thing that you believe, you tend to Go to the people that you believe will help you. And guess what? Those people sometimes be, be the worst right. people to go to. Right. Sometimes. I'm not saying all the time. I'm saying sometimes. We got to broaden our mind. We got to open up our perspective. We got to understand that our help comes from God. And only God. And God can use whomever and whatever he wants to. Now she sees this child. She hears this child cry. And she says this is one of the Hebrew children. Listen at how God works things out. You remember Joseph 
You remember how everything that Joseph went through, if those that have been walking with me in this, on this journey, Joseph went through so many trials, so many tribulations, so many trepidations, that at the end of the day, it didn't seem like he was headed in the direction that God said he would ultimately be in, but it took all of that to get to where God needed him to be. Sometimes God takes you way over there, or way over there, to get you to where it is that you need to be. Don't give up hope because you're not close to where you think you ought to be. Don't give up and don't throw your hands up and just rock, ball up at a pity party and say, well, God, don't look like it'll ever happen because you might be exactly where God wants you right now. Right. Right. You're right, real right where God needs you to be right now. When you're bowed down and body bent and you don't see no way out, God is there for you. Listen to what goes on here. It says, then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call? To thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee. I'll open up the door. I'll, now you're truly trusting in the Lord. Whether she knows it or not, God's providence is working through and through these lessons that we'll go through. God's providence, God's providence is working in our lives right now. She asked the Pharaoh's daughter, would you like for me to go and get for you, one of the Hebrew women, so that they may nurse yeah. this child. Yeah. She didn't just run and go get somebody. Right. She didn't say, "Let me, I'm going to get me somebody right now. She asked. Right. Yeah. She, had, she had enough respect for the situation that she was dealing with or the thing that she was going through. She had enough respect to ask for permission to do it, yeah. to open the door. Pharaoh's daughter said unto her at nine, take the child away. Oh, hold up, eight. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Mm -hmm. Can you see how God will work it out? Can you see how God worked things out? Psalm 71 and 6 said, by thee have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowel. My praise shall be continually of thee. Psalms 22 and 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. God has taken care of you from the womb to the grave. He'll take care of you. From the cradle to the grave. God is with you even if you're not asking him, even if you don't recognize it, even if you don't know it. God is working in your life. Look at how this, look at how God has orchestrated this situation. Yeah. Moses is somebody special. Yeah. Moses is somebody that's going to be, be extremely instrumental to these people. Yeah. Nobody knows it. Oh, yeah. Nobody understands it. You don't know what that child is. You don't know what that child is going to be. You don't know what you may be. You don't know what God has for you. You don't know what God has for you just because you're not, like I said, where you think you ought to be right now. God can still use you, will use you, and is going to use you. Yes. Plan, purpose, path. Remember, I started out with that. Plan, purpose, path. God has a plan, a purpose, and a pattern for everybody's life. Yeah. Yours isn't the same as mine. Yeah. Mine isn't the same as yours. Right. But there is still one for you. Let's go ahead. I, I already read it, but I'm going to read it again. Nine. And, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the women took the child and nursed it. You take this child and nurse it for me, because I know that my father, under any other circumstances, would have this child killed. And I'll pay you. Uh -huh. wow. Won't God make your enemies right, no. your footstool? Yeah. Won't he put them in the place of your deliverer? The one that may, uh -huh. have, may have thought that they would be your destruction. Your enemies aren't to be hated because God said that you're supposed to pray oh, yeah. for those. Yeah. That despise and misuse you. Yeah. 
He wants you to keep them around. He doesn't want you to do without enemies. He need, you need those enemies. You have to have those enemies. You got to have them because they're going to provide that step ladder that you need to get you to the next point in life. She tells that woman to go and nurse this child for her, and I'm going to pay you to do it. See how God works things out. It says here, in 10, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Mm -hmm. Names mean something. Names mean something. Don't know what they mean nowadays. Don't know. I don't know what they're thinking about. A heap. I mean, as, as I say on, on Shady Lane, a heap of time. I don't know what they're thinking about now when they name these kids. And the child can't even learn. Don't can't learn to spell their own name until they about ten or eleven years old. Don't know what they mean now. But if I name you after your after my father, then that meant something. If I name you after me, then that's something. If I name you after your great aunt who I love, then whenever you ask, where did I get that name, Mary? You can say, you named after your aunt. You name, but now if you name me Nazareth uh, Fictelis, <laughs> where does that name come from? I was just looking at a book and saw it. Be careful what you name your children, be careful what name you put on them because they may live that name out in, all, in truth. Yeah. Says here, after he done grew up, then he became Pharaoh's son, Pharaoh's grandson. Yeah. The daughter's son. He has all the privileges of the past. He has all the, he has all the access to the education. Everything that they can offer in Egypt, he's receiving it. All the pleasures, all the dainties, all the, everything that you could even think of from being a son that was given away, thrown away, put in a river by the mother. Father apparently nowhere around. These are Levi's folks now. Remember I told you I wanted us to know all of these people. If you can remember everything I'm saying, when we went back and studied, and we went back and we talked about the Levites and the Sima and the Simeons, and we talked about the Issachar and the Zebulun, we talked about all of these people, and I said, they're going to come up again in the scripture. Yeah. Their posterity, those that come out to them, they're going to come in, in the scripture. Later on, these are Le the, Moses' and Levi ancestors. It's going to come up here in a minute. Listen to what we're going to talk about. It says, child came up and he brought Pharaoh and brought up as Pharaoh's daughter, son. And she called his name Moses. And he said, because I drew him out of the world. 11, it said, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brother and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian, smiting in Hebrew, right. one of his brothers. Now, the mother nursed him. And the mother was nanny to this child. She taught him that you are being raised in an Egyptian home, but you're a Hebrew. Their burdens are your burdens. Their trials are your trials. Their, tri their tribulations, they're yours. These are your brothers. You're living in the lap of luxury, but now your brothers are out there suffering. So don't ever forget who you are. Have you, ever heard, have you ever heard anybody say that? Don't forget who you are. Don't forget where you come from. I come from Nath, off of Nathville, off Nathville Ferry Road, Hughes Road on one side, Nathville Ferry Road on the other, Shady Lane is the cut through road. That's why I was born and bred. Older people call it gutters. Down the gutters. That's where I'm from. That's where I was born and raised. That's where my folks are from. Yeah. That's where all my friends were from. Yeah. That's who formed me to be who I am. Right. I'll never be ashamed of it if I go to Washington, D.C. I tell whomever sitting in the White House. Yeah. When they ask me where I'm from, I'll say, Nashville Fair Road on one side, Hughes Road on the other, Shady Lane is the cut through. I live on Felix Road. Yeah. 
That's where I came up from, barefoot and, and no shirt most of them. Don't ever forget where you come from. I guarantee she made sure that he, she told him that. I guarantee she told Moses that these are your brothers. And it says here in 12. And he looked this way, that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. These Levi's folk. Remember Levi and Simeon? I said them boys didn't play. Now these are their heads. He is their ancestor. He has the compassion of Jacob and Abraham because he feels for the suffering of his people. But he has the violent tendencies of Simeon and Levi. He has their violent proclivities. Their tendencies. He acts upon what he sees and he kills one. But he looks most of he, he, you know, he's just like remember, remember how Simeon and Levi got, got those, got those, uh, those, those, those men that they killed, yeah. have them circumcised themselves, yeah. Yeah. every one of us, so we can be brothers. You can come in now when we can come into yours, circumcise yourself, and we'll all be one. And as soon as they had circumcised themselves and were sore, they jumped on, them, slew every last one of them with the sword, yeah. and then took all of their spoils. Mm -hmm. Moses looked one way. And he looked the other way to make sure in his mind yeah. nobody sees him. Uh -huh. Then he slew him. And he didn't just kill him. He buried him yeah. in the same. Oh, yeah. Done Done deal. Oh, it. 13. And when he went out the second day, behold, he's about 40 years old now. Yeah. He's about 40 years old. Behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to them, said to him, that did the wrong. Wherefore smited thou fell. Now you got to understand that like I said, he has the compassion of Abraham and Jacob. He has their sensitivity and compassion. And plus his mother raised him to know that these are your brothers. Don't fight each other. Don't fight against each other. Don't smile. We're dealing with enough with these Egyptians. All right. We're dealing with enough being oppressed by these Egyptians, these Egyptians, and now you're fighting amongst yourself. Please don't do that. This is what Moses said. Remember the day before he defended one of his brothers. Right, right. Killed off an Egyptian that was wronging him, probably one of these taskmasters. And now he sees two of his brothers striving against one another. Yeah. And he talked to him. He said, don't do it. And it says here in 14. And he said, that's the one that he's talking to. And he said, who made thee prince and a judge over us? Indeed is thou, I intend this thou excuse me, to kill me. What you talking about, brother? I ain't saying nothing about killing you, brother. Y'all just need to cut up. Just, just. But now he asks another caveat. To the conversation. Yeah. As thou killest the Egyptian. And Moses feared. As anybody would. Yeah. He brought up. Some of his former act. He said I saw you. You going to kill us. Like you did the Egyptian yesterday. Who made you prince. Who made you uh, judge over us. Moses feared. And said surely the thing is known. Says here in 15, now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. 16, now the priest of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the trough to water their father's flock. 17, and the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Moses wasn't scared. Right. And he had, he had some honor about it. Yeah. It wasn't right for those shepherds to come and run those women off and water their flock. And the women had to wait until they get through doing whatever they got had to do before they could even feed their father's flock. Mm -hmm. Moses had compassion. Yeah. Moses had compassion for those that were underlings. Yeah. Those that were uh, underdogs. And he ran them off. He wasn't afraid of confrontation. Yeah. 
But he knew that he was fighting a losing battle, and God was using him. God was causing all these things to happen. Moses wasn't afraid. He ran, and I believe that God, God was leading. Sovereignty. Providence. Take care of yourself, because I got something else for you to do later on. Take care of yourself. 17 says, Shepherd came and ran them all. 18, and when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that ye have come so soon today? Came back too quick. Normally it takes you a long time. Apparently he didn't know what was going on down there at the watering hole. Apparently he didn't understand that his daughter was having to fight for water to feed your flock. Apparently his seven daughters just kept it to themselves, but now they're going to tell it. And uh, as I heard one preacher, they're going to tell it all. They're going to tell it all. And it says 19, and they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherd and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. 20, and he said unto his daughter, and where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. 21, and Moses was content to dwell with the man and he gave Moses the power. His daughter, mm -hmm. Zappara, Zipporah, yeah. however you want to pronounce it. But at the end of the day, you got to understand, and you got to hear what I'm saying when I'm saying that God is working in every one of these situations. Remember, he was in the palace. Yeah. Now he's in a pastor. Yeah. God, is, God is fixing him and preparing him for the work that he'll have to do later on. You sleeping in a palace and you haven't in the lap of luxury and you having everything that you want, people feeding you grapes and fanning you all day long, you won't be prepared for that that I have for you. Yeah. Moses is going to have to deal with some situation. Moses is going to have to deal with some convoluted people. He's going to have to live, he's going to have to deal with some people and some things that we don't know yet. Remember, we're walking this road as though we don't know. Yes, sir. But now that he is living in Midian, and he's having to fend for himself. He's having to fight for himself. He's having to feed flock for himself. He's having to take care of all that he needs to take care of himself. God is fixing him so that he can be ready for when God needs him. Is God fixing you? Are you going through some things right now that you think that may be a little hard on you? Are you going through some things right now that may be a little trying right now? Are you going through some things right now that you may feel as though are overcoming? They are insurmountable. Some things that seem like you can't overcome. Well, keep moving. Keep moving. God has something for you down there. God has something for you. Greater is later. You'll understand it when you see it. And the old folks that by and by, you'll understand it. But we got to go through these things. God said that trials and tribulations, they are sure. Yes, sir. But be of good cheer. Yes, sir. Now he's living in Midian. And he's a shepherd. And he says here in 22, and he bat, and she bare him a son. And he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. Yeah. Had a name and he had a purpose for naming him that. It's going to be this way all the way through these lessons. 23, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reasons of the bondage. And they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Mm. One king dies, but the one his predecessor is evil. But the one that comes out to him is worse than that. Oh, yeah. One Leader is worse than the one before. It just keeps continually happening over and over, over and over. Yeah. This is 400 years. Remember, I told you we're going to move pretty fast. We've gone 400 years in two, in two chapters. Yeah. All right. Moses is grown at this point. Moses has a family at this point. All the other, all the patriarchs are dead. All right. That generation is gone. And now we're talking about a whole new, different types of type of people in different situations. And they cry. And they cry. They finish in one minute, two minutes, three. <laughs> 24 says though, if you cry, 
If you cry to the Lord, if you petition God, and if you're on your merciful knees, not figuratively, but fit, not, not, not literally, but figuratively, yeah. on your merciful knees, if you're at your wit's end and you're crying to God, God hear you. God hears your cry. God hears your prayer. God hears your distress call. Your SOS. He understands it. He knows that you're going to go through something, but it says that God won't put no more on you. I don't even know if that's a scripture, but there's scripture probably that would say similar thing. Yeah. It would imply, it would infer the same thing that God's not going to put no more on you than what you could bear. It says here in 24, what does it say? And God heard their groan. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. 25, and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. He heard them, and he remembered. That I made a promise. That's a covenant. God promised to man. He remembered it. And God is true to his word. Yes, sir. God will not leave you, nor will he forsake you. Right. He said that to us. Right. Do you believe it? Right. He said that he would be with us even until the end. Do you believe that? Right. That when times get hard, that God isn't with you, but he's taking you through it. All right. That God isn't standing beside you. He's lifting you and told you. Like that, like that, like that pitch on, on most a lot of people wall when when it said it got too hard for this man. He realized it was just one 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 uh uh footprint yeah. in the sand. When it got hard, it seemed like the two footprints that he saw at some point was gone. God had to tell him. It was then I carried you. I picked you up. I carried you through the hard time. Believe God at his word. He is about to come to these people's rescue. I think. It say it hurt him. It say that they cried. It say that, they, that God heard them. It said that he remembered. But is he going to come to their rescue? Is he going to be the God that he was for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Is he going to come and do what he said he would do when they multiplied the way that they, they multiplied at this point? Is God on his way? Does God have a deliverer for him? Does God have somebody to lead him? Hmm. Don't know. But you know what? We're going to find out. We're going to find out. But guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to come back. You're going to have to come back to find out. You're going to have to come back and find out. And I tell you what, it's going to be just like I said it was going to be. It's going to be good because God's word is good. What David say, taste. Taste and see. Taste and see that it's good. Keep, keep coming back. And I hope that these lessons inspire. I hope these lessons empower I hope these lessons motivate us to move to the places that we may otherwise not go right. because we look at it as being a little bit too hard. That we move and we move with God and accomplish those magnificent and marvelous things that he has waiting for. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've been here with us. We thank you, Lord, that you were with these men. And we know, Lord, that you're with us right now. Lord, we pray for your strength. We pray for your guidance. We pray for your understanding. We pray for your knowledge. We pray for your wisdom to know how to deal with the circumstances that we go through, to navigate, Lord, through the things that we uh, have to deal with. Lord, we know, Lord, that you've always been there. We trust in you. We believe in you. Mm. We love you, Lord, yes. because you first loved us. Lord, we ask that you just continually be with us, Lord. Empower us in whatever way we stand in need of being empowered. Lord, I pray for traveling grace and destination mercy. Yes. As we leave this place. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Give you all the honor, give you all the glory for you deserve. 
Amen. And thank God. And as always, respect yourself. Peace.